Hello everyone, welcome to this training. I'll be teaching you how to make this turban design. Um, I have my materials here and the material I'll be using is a stretchy fabric. It's a poly, plain poly, shiny plain poly material. It's a stretchy fabric. So I'll measure my length and my length is 23 and a half inches. Please, my head circumference, my own head circumference is 22 inches. But here, I measured 23 and a half inches length by 14 inches width. 23 and a half inches length by 14 inches width. The 23 and a half inches side is that stretchy part. The reason why I added one and a half inch to the 22 inches is because I want this cap to be big. So, um, I will start to mark out where I will sew. Uh, first of all, mark out three and a half inches three and a half inches this is where we'll go around my head this is for the band band area so i'm marking out three and a half, three and a half inches that's the first thing to mark out on this fabric after that i'll start marking out two and a half inches i'll do it just twice two and a half inches i'll just do it two times just one two then i'll move over the other side i'll do it again two and a half inches then I will, that's how I will mark all down. Just mark two and a half inches twice. I don't know if you understand. Then I will continue two and a half inches. Yes, that's what I'm doing down there. Then, after marking out the two and a half inches, I will do exactly the same thing that I did here. Same thing that I did, I will do it on this other fabric. I'll do exactly the same thing on this other fabric. Remember, where I marked out is the stretchy part. And I'll do the same thing I just did now on this other fabric. So I have marked out both fabrics. I've done the measurement. Next thing to do is to form my band. To form my band, I will use my pin to hold it down. Watch closely and see what I did. This is the right side. Please, when marking out, mark in the wrong side, the wrong area. That is the inside. So people will not see what you did. So that side I marked out is the wrong area. So I'll start from my band side. The place I marked three and a half inches, I'll fold it. You know, this place is the stretchy part. And I marked three and a half inches. That's where I'm folding from. So don't get confused. What I'll do is to use my pins. I will fold from that edge to that point that I marked out. Watch what I did. I will fold it. I will fold it and use my pin to hold it down. I will drag from that edge and also fold where I marked out. As you do that, stretch it out, please. Smoothen it out so there will be no fold, so it will not be rough. So, I will use my pin to hold it down. Beginners can use pins. For people that are already into tailoring, you must not use pin, but I advise you use pin to get a good stitch. So that's what I will do now. I will hold, fold everything down, down. At that point, that's where I will sew. Watch it. I will sew this place. I will sew it. Just take like half an inch and sew. Just sew down there. Please, what I just did now, I will do exactly the same thing on this fabric. All right, I'm back. I'm done sewing. So I'll remove all my pins. I'll remove all. If you watch closely, you observe that I'm done. I'm done with stitching. It's very neat. And my band is ready. My band side is ready. So I remove the whole pins out. Next thing I'll be doing is to form my gathers. I'll form my gathers. I'm turning that side that I marked out. So you see what I'm doing. I will fold. Just fold that point that you marked out. And you pin down. Fold that place that you just marked out. You fold it and pin down. Why I'm using that pin is not so that I won't make mistake when I'm stitching. It's also advisable that when you are pinning, when you are using pin to hold it, shift your hand down small. Don't pin at the edge because you know why so you not remove the pin. So, just shift your hand backwards more and pin down. So, I will do the whole pin. I will pin everything down and I will seal that edge. I will do it for that first pleat. 
do same thing on this second plate again. I will use my pin and hold everything down. After holding it down, I will sew it down. Exactly the same thing that I did here. I will do it on this fabric. I'm done sewing, but look closely and see what I did. In this particular fabric, this one, I already sewed both. I did first, second, and third. Then I left the down part. Now look at this one, this particular one. I just sewed only two, and I want to show you something. You can use this method if you want. You can use the other method if you want, or you can use this one I'm showing you now. I normally use this method, it's faster. So what I will just do is after sewing my band and sew my first pleat, now what I will do is I will fold from the bottom to the middle, from the bottom to that to that second pleat, I'll fold it. That's what I normally do. I don't sew first and second. What I'll just do is after sewing the first, I will now use pin and guide this together, guide both together before sewing. How do I do? So I hold it and I pin down. So I'll pin all through, I'll pin all through and take to my sewing machine and sew this particular one. Then I'll show you what to do in the other material. Don't forget that after holding it down, you sew, you sew it. So for this other material, you know I've already sewn it. I've already done first, second and third. What I want to do is to join again there. You have to hold it down there again and sew. So it depends on you. Why I did these two methods? It's because of beginners. Uh, you check out the one you want to do and go on with it. For me, normally do that other style. I'll just sew the middle, the first plate. I'll just sew it up. Then join the bottom to the second plate. And I'll just sew up. So check the one that is okay by you. And you can form your plates with that. So after doing this, I will take it to my sewing machine. I will take both of them to my sewing machine and sew down. Yeah, I'm through with sewing and I've removed my pins. So this is what you will get. Just remove your pins after sewing. And this is the outcome. My plates are ready. Can you see? The two pieces are ready. So the next step now is to form my gathers. You try to locate the middle try to locate the middle of this fabric so i'll fold it into two fold you fold the material into two and please why folding this side that three inches side will be facing out and the other three inches side will be facing you don't you forget me the three inches side will be facing you and the other three inches side will be facing out so that's how you turn it so you make your fold, you fold it equal and locate the center. You get your shock or your marker, anything, and note down the middle. And if you understand me, you mark it down and note down the middle. Then you fold the other fabric. Do the same thing to this fabric. Fold, then unfold and locate the center. Use your shock, your marker, anything. To mark out the center up and down don't forget that the three inches side is facing you and the other piece the three inches side is facing outside look at how i placed it please at this junction you can use your stones to embellish i tried doing that but there's there's no nepa in my area so there's power failure that's why i didn't embellish mine but you can do yours if you want this way you can do the embellishment if you want if you desire to do that so I will strand my thread to my needle and I will tack, just do a temporal stitch, running stitch. So I will do a temporal running stitch from that point down to that point. Remember, it's from the middle, the center. Just watch closely what I'm doing and you will get it right. Don't forget to place your fabric the way I did mine. The folded band side is facing me. Why the other folded band side is facing outside? I don't know if you get me. So 
watch here very closely so you don't make mistakes while folding if you don't do it this way you will make mistake you won't get this design so i'm done with stitching it's a temporary stitch that's why i'm using another color of thread i will still remove that thread that's why i use another color of thread here after stitching i turn the fabric the wrong side is now facing me hope you see what i did the wrong side where the rough part is now facing me so i want to form my crisscross i will take material one and cross over material two and material two we cross over material one don't if you get what i just did now i will repeat what i did i'll repeat it so you won't get confused i'll repeat it now i have material one in front yes material one in front i have material two so material two we cross over material one why material one we cross over material two so with that i'll take my pins i'll arrange it well take my pins and pin from this edge that outer edge not inside the first place i will pin down is this point please note that this point and take your hand inside small why pinning down take your hands small inside because you know you still see that area you don't see on top of your pin so you adjust and pin down so i'm doing my first pin that place is where i will seal down i will do my first join in there then after this the other side i will do the same thing that i just did now i will pick the two edges and make it to be equal i use my pin and hold them together yes and i will join remember when joining join from this rough part don't go and seal the front too you seal from this rough edge this back this back is where you seal so you pin down you pin down so we've gotten one and two and if you can see it's one and two so next thing to do is we now have two places that we've not pinned and if you get me we now have two places that we've not pinned we have pinned the other two it's remaining one we just pin the remaining one and this is the front you can see it and this also the front you can see it and it's very smooth so i join this together this other side i join it together remember you are sewing from the back not the front you are sewing from the back not the front and start from this edge to pin down and that is where you start your sewing when sewing, start from that place you pinned and enter inside. So, I've pinned the whole things. Then I got one, two, and three. I'll sew all and show you. Alright, I'm done with mine. You can see all my plates that are standing. I'm, I is neatly done and neatly sewn. So, they are ready. The last part, this is the front, you can see it. The last thing to do is to I will remove my that temporary stitch. Please remove it. Remove it. That's why I use another color of thread. This place I'm holding now is where my head circumference will go. This is the front of the turban. That place that will be around my head. So I will hold both this point. I will hold it down. And I pin down. I will seal this edge. That's the only place remaining. I will seal it. Please, why sewing? start from this place i'm holding because this is where will cover your forehead so you see from here down you see it down you see it down neatly what i have something to tell you please um remember my head circumference is 22 inches my head circumference is 22 inches but we measured here 23 and a half i added one and a half inch to that my 20 to that my 22 inches so what i will do now is at this band area remove one and a half don't if you understand me 22 plus one and a half will give you 23 and a half so use your tape use your tape your measuring tape measure out one and a half and mark out just that band area that place that is three and a half inches just mark it out mark it out mark out one and a half inch then form a curve inside can you see it form a curve inside this is how you sew it 
why I did this is because I normally braid big hair and I normally carry full hair. So I want whenever I make full hair, this turban can still enter. I don't know if you get me. So I'm done sewing. You can see that. See, see how my hand curved inside and I'll cut out the excess from that band area. Cut out the excess down. I cut it out. The reason why I moved my hand inside from the beginning is because my head circumference is 22 inches. Then I shifted my hand out. Reason is because after braiding my hair, it can still enter. And even if I braid small hair, it can still enter. I will just fold it inside. Yeah. Our turban cap is ready. Our pleated crisscrossed turban is ready. You can see that crisscross place. You can see it. Well pleated. And that's how to do it. It's very easy. You can try it out. And you can rock yours. Another thing is this. You can, um, at the back of the turban, if you wash mine, you will see that it's long and big. See, it's long. Why I left mine this way is because of that my hair, I told you. But if you don't want yours long, what you just do is you use your needle and thread and do a running stitch from your gathers at the back. From one to the third plate, just from here to there. Just from here to this place. Just from your gathers. And it's okay. If you don't want yours to be as long as mine, you can just from your gathers and stop there. And to have this look. To have this look. But why I left mine that way is, I told you, I normally braid full hair. So it will be able to enter without stress. Even if I braid small hair, it can still enter. What I will do is I will use my hand and push it inside. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.